drifting. It's the controlled blocking of the wheels at high speeds. The car swerves, swiveling from one side to the other. And that's the kick right there. It's about maintaining control of your car at all times. Their hazardous moves on public streets and have become one of the most popular hobbies among young Saudis. At the same time, a person dies in a car accident every 90 minutes in the desert state. And many of these accidents happen at illegal drifting events. It's a societal phenomenon that often has lethal consequences. I want to understand why Saudis are so crazy for cars. And I want to meet professional drifters that are trying to establish drifting as a legal sport, saving lives in doing so. Right after landing in Riyadh, I'm confronted with illegal drifting on public streets. Jetzt hat hier gerade einer einfach mal so aus heiterem Himmel angefangen zu driften. Riyadh is a metropolis of about six million people, and as soon as you get on the streets, it seems like each one of them is in a car going somewhere. I meet Said Al Mouri on the roof of the Al Faisalia Tower, one of the tallest buildings in town. Said is one of Saudi Arabia's most famous pro drifters who, like many young Saudis, first came into contact with drifting on the streets of Riyadh and whose life was influenced by illegal drifting from an early age. One guy I can call a friend uh, had a really, really bad accident. The doors of the car couldn't be opened and the car caught fire and nobody could help him. And seeing him dying inside the car, uh, it was really sad and people got to know the, how dangerous it is seeing a friend uh, dying under the fire of the car. When you hear these stories, I mean, that must scare people a lot, right? It should. Today he distanced himself from the scene and has made it a goal to come out actively against illegal drifting. The only illegal drifting that I have seen before was in a handful of videos that show these guys making life-threatening turns on public streets. I'd like to learn more about it and drive through the city with Said. He shows me the streets that people drift on almost daily. Das ist diese berühmte Straße in Riyadh, wo die ganzen krassen Drifts stattgefunden haben, die man auf uh, YouTube sehen kann. But even these hazardous drifts on public streets aren't enough of a challenge for some of the drifters in this scene. You will see uh, tire marks on the side walls here. So people challenge each other to drive up. I will, I will go a bit further. What are the punishments? Usually it was five days in jail and then their car for one month but now it can reach to two years of jail. Even people standing on the street will have the same punishment. Sometimes one month if they were filming or doing anything, because they are helping for the exposure of uh, illegal drifting. For the past two or three years, I've never seen uh, a live drifting, so it's good. The police have a reason cracking down on illegal drifting. One of the most well-known illegal drifters, Abu Kab, killed three children in an accident. He got 20 years in prison and 3,000 lashes for causing the accident. To get to know another side of drifting, I head to the eastern province. Here in the city of Al Khobar, the final round of Drift Force is taking place. It's one of the biggest pro drift events in Saudi Arabia and has already drawn thousands of motorsport fans in the previous rounds. Here I can see up close how a growing legal scene is developing alongside illegal drifting. In addition to the pro-drift competition, Drift Force is committed to getting young men off the streets and onto the racetrack. I meet with Mohammed Kashkash, one of the event organizers, to find out how big of a role the amateur section plays in pro-drifting. It's huge. I mean, uh, it, it's the most important thing, honestly. The only way to get to a professional stage is go through amateurs and semi-pro. We really try and focus on the amateurs because they're the future. Yeah. When I drift, it's like nothing else. It's like the best drug in the world for me. Like, I know I don't do it for the money, I don't do it for, I do it for passion. The drifters are evaluated in point categories during their runs. 
There are 30 points for each of the categories, speed, drifting into marked lines, and clipping points. The fourth category is the drifter's driving style. Each judge can subjectively give up to five points. In total, you can reach up to 100 points. I saw really particular cars at Drift Force, not just everyday models. For the most part, they're luxury cars that get tuned in Saudi Arabia. We are now in the industry area of Riyadh. Here are all garages, unter anderem auch Rias Motorsports, Said and Muris Sponsor. Wir schauen uns jetzt mal an, wie ein Driftcar zusammengebaut wird. Rias Motorsports specializes in converting cars into high performance vehicles. This is where Said's mechanics work on his new car. The head mechanic Dumit can better explain what's so special about a professional drift car. <laughs> I can't fit in that seat, man. The main thing is it's a roll cage. The roll cage, we did it to make it strong. Yeah, and this handbrake, does it block all wheels? It's just rear wheels. just the rear wheels? Just the rear wheels. You can do a drift without this handbrake, but it's not professional and it's not any. Yani, when you need to move the car, you cannot. Can you tell me something about the, the wheels? They look a little bit off. To let him turn inside without touching the body, you need to make it off a little bit. But it's not only the roll cage, the front axle, and the handbrake which distinguishes the drift car from a regular model. It is also the motor that is swapped to give the car the necessary power for drifting. Said has an 800 horsepower motor installed in his car to be able to keep up with the ever more powerful competition. The world of pro drifting is much more than a casual hobby. After learning about the specifics of drift cars, it's about time I get behind the wheel. On the outskirts of Riyadh, there's a new drift academy with a training strip. There, professional drifter and instructor Abdul Hadi Al Katani explains both the theory and the practice of drifting. drifting. There's clipping points. There's a front clipping point. You have to take the cars from here all the way to the clipping point, then to go out. Usually, I don't instruct because uh, I don't have patience with the students. Yeah. So then let's go. <laughs> Gear, first gear, it can handle. Okay. Just keep it fit, no need to shift in second gear. Okay. Die Technik des Driftens ist eigentlich ziemlich simpel. Man beschleunigt auf einer geraden Strecke so schnell es geht, dreht das Lenkrad auf die linke Seite und reißt die Handbremse nach oben und behält das Lenkrad auf der rechten Seite im Anschlag damit die Räder sich drehen und das Auto die Driftbewegung einleitet. But even though the actual execution of a drift only encompasses a few movements, perfecting these movements is a bit more complex than you'd first think. But how respected is it in the professional motorsports scene? To find out, I'm going to the place where conventional motorsports meets the world of professional drifting. So ich bin jetzt hier am Ream International Circuit. I meet up with Said again, who as an ambassador for the emerging pro drift scene is promoting his sport to the established and glamorous GT racers. Pro drifting has become a recognized sport, but how is Said's engagement reaching young people? It looks a bit different than at Drift Force, it's a bit bigger. Said, he does a lot. He goes around and he does like little showcases where kids can get to see and he talks to them, he talks to them about traffic safety and if they want to actually race, they should come to a track where it's everything's safe. And I see a lot of new faces. Saeed Al Mori acts as a link between amateurs and the newly developed pro drift scene. But in spite of his engagement, a lot of things still have to happen to get a bigger portion of Saudi youth to understand that you can only be a true champion on the racetrack. I always say that we have uh, a lot of petrol heads. But we don't have motorsport, which is a two totally different things. People love cars, they love speed. But when you come to motorsport, where it needs to be more structured, it's sport. Does it get kids off the street? I don't know how many drivers you've met with, but I'm sure there are more than 100. Yeah. And if you ask them, would you go back to the street? They'll say no.
In Saeed and his crew's world, a liter of water is more expensive than a liter of gasoline. The pro-drifting community is a big family that warmly accepts each new member, me included, even though I didn't really know a lot about drifting in the first place. Illegal drifting is still a problem on the streets of Saudi Arabia, but with the help of Saeed and other pro-drifters, pro-drifting has become a legal and recognized sport that's prompting more and more people to celebrate their idols.